You are just saying you're... you're as... Get your and get out of my room. I bought you go. I don't want your See. Get. Michael, Auntie, I'm going Auntie, to hit you right in the mouth. You don't, you don't you do all this. Uh, okay, what are I you doing here? I come to get away from you. I know, I know. That's not going to work this time. Please, please. There's your cake, Michael. That doesn't work this time. She threw my clothes in the hallway. She made me sleep in the car. And now she threw a cake at me. Here. I thought it was a guy we was talking to. Ma matter of fact, thank y'all for coming. I'm done. Thank you. I'm done. Where's your car? There's not gonna be a marriage. Tell a woman, tell me what the f is going on in America. And f you too. I'm sick of it. Why, why, why did you act like that? Shut up! Don't f me no more to f day! I'm why would you do that right now? Why would you do that? Listen. Ain't no listening. That, that bitch that, can't tell me that, nothing about my household or you. You I always take advice from I'm people I'm besides I'm your wife to I be. When did you think I, I was going to agree with that? I didn't hang out with you. Welcome back. Michael Ilisanmi had always been a man of quiet strength, navigating his way through life with a sense of purpose and dignity. His journey from Nigeria to America had been filled with dreams of a brighter future, both for himself and for his family back home. But those dreams had been shattered, piece by piece, by the very person he had trusted the most, Angela Dean. When Michael first arrived in America, he had been hopeful, excited to build a new life with the woman he had fallen in love with. But that hope had slowly eroded, replaced by a suffocating sense of despair as Angela's true colors began to show. Angela had always been a force to be reckoned with, fiery, outspoken, and unapologetically herself. But beneath that tough exterior lay a woman who craved control, who needed to dominate those around her to feel secure. And Michael, the man who had once been her equal partner, had become the primary target of her need for power. The love that had once brought them together had been replaced by a toxic dynamic where Angela held all the cards and Michael was left scrambling to pick up the pieces of his shattered self-worth. The turning point had come when Angela made the ultimate betrayal. She had withdrawn all the money they had earned together, money that was rightfully both of theirs, and put it into a private account, leaving Michael with nothing. She had thrown him out of the house, claiming ownership of everything, despite the fact that they were legally married. The financial devastation was severe, but the emotional toll was even greater. Michael, who had always prided himself on his ability to provide, found himself destitute, both in resources and in spirit. Angela's actions were not just a financial betrayal, they were an assault on Michael's very identity. He had always been a man who found his worth in his ability to contribute, to stand on his own two feet. But now, he was left with nothing, stripped of his dignity and self-esteem. Angela had taken everything from him, leaving him feeling like a nobody in a country that was supposed to be his new home. It was as if she had ripped away his very sense of self, leaving behind a man who was barely recognizable to himself. The exploitation didn't stop at home. Michael had become a puppet in the hands of TLC, the network that aired 90 Day Fiancé. What had started as a genuine portrayal of a cross-cultural love story had devolved into a spectacle, with Michael at the center of a drama that was more about ratings than reality. TLC had capitalized on Angela's brash personality and Michael's quiet suffering, turning their relationship into a circus act for the world to gawk at. Michael had been reduced to a caricature of himself, a passive, suffering husband who could never quite stand up to his overbearing wife. The world saw him as a man who had lost his voice, his agency, and his dignity. Take off my Take off my You know what? You will not. I repeat, Hello? you will not. Where my damn presence at, bitch? You better get out my Georgia ass face. This is a How can you be a Why, why are you doing this? You know how upset you got me all day? What happened, Michael? I'm just down the streets. I am my nephew. You have a lying problem. You don't aggravate me. You don't deserve this. You just celebrated your birthday. I have, I've been waiting to get here to ask you all this. You're lying. Daddy, you lie about what? I'm ready to go home. This boat ride. What do you mean that? You, you lied again in my that face. Was. On your social media. In my picture. I'm ready to go. But what the world didn't see was the depth of Michael's pain, the way Angela's words and actions had eroded his confidence day by day. She had belittled him, called him names, and treated him as if he were nothing more than a burden. Each insult, each demeaning comment, chipped away at the man he used to be. 
Michael had come to America with dreams of a better life, but he found himself living a nightmare, one where the woman he loved had become his oppressor. However, beneath the surface of his suffering, there was a flicker of resilience that refused to be extinguished. Michael had always been a survivor, and even in his darkest moments, he knew that he had to find a way to rise again. The road to recovery was not easy, and it was not one he traveled alone. While Angela had taken everything from him, she could not take away the goodwill of the people who saw his pain and wanted to help. A groundswell of support began to build, as people from all over the world reached out to Michael. They had seen the injustice he had suffered, and they wanted to help him get back on his feet. Donations began to pour in, small at first, but growing steadily as more people learned of his plight. The money wasn't just a financial lifeline, it was a symbol of hope, a reminder that there were still people who believed in him, who saw his worth even when he couldn't see it himself. With each donation, Michael felt a little piece of himself returning. He used the money to secure a modest apartment, far away from the toxic environment Angela had created. It wasn't much, but it was a start, a place where he could begin to rebuild his life, piece by piece. He found work, not the glamorous life he had imagined, but honest, decent work that allowed him to regain a sense of purpose. Every day was a struggle, but it was also a step forward, a move away from the shadow of the man he had become under Angela's control. Michael knew that his journey was far from over. The scars Angela had left on his soul were deep, and they would take time to heal. But for the first time in a long time, he could see a future for himself, a future where he was not defined by his past, but by the strength he found to overcome it. He began to reconnect with his family in Nigeria, who had always been his anchor. Their support, combined with the outpouring of kindness from strangers, reminded him that he was not alone, that he had value beyond what Angela had tried to make him believe. As Michael slowly began to rebuild his life, he also started to reflect on the lessons he had learned. He realized that he had allowed Angela to take control because he had been afraid, afraid of losing her, of being alone in a foreign country, of not being enough. But now, he understood that real love was not about control or domination, it was about mutual respect and partnership. Angela's betrayal had taught him that he needed to value himself more, to stand up for his own worth, even when others tried to diminish it. I'm not Nigerian woman, Michael, American, and I'm not eating that freaking head. I don't give a I can't live like this. God, thank you for the United States of America. Sorry. I probably got malaria now. Oh, no, yes, I do. You know, I'm a hypochondriac, and I'm feeling sick. Oh, shut up. You're a nasty son of a bitch. I don't know how you see I'm calling you a bitch. I'm to be the nice bitch. I am that bitch your mama warned you about. Remember that? I'm the American prideful bitch, remember? Angela, she just started yelling the moment that he answered the phone. I really didn't even hear his voice. I don't know what he said. Are you talking? No, I'm not. I'm saying the one side. I'm an American. Land Michael also began to see his experience with TLC in a new light. While the network had exploited his pain for profit, it had also given him a platform, a way to reach people who could help him. He realized that he could use his story, not just as a cautionary tale, but as a source of inspiration for others who might be going through similar struggles. He started to think about how he could use his newfound visibility to advocate for others who had been mistreated or exploited, to speak out against the kind of abuse he had endured. In time, Michael's financial situation began to stabilize, thanks to the continued support of those who believed in him. But more importantly, his self-esteem started to recover. He no longer saw himself as a victim of Angela's cruelty, but as a survivor who had the strength to overcome adversity. He began to walk with his head held high, no longer afraid of what the future might hold, because he knew that he had the power to shape it. Angela, meanwhile, continued to live in her own world, oblivious to the changes in Michael. She still saw him as the man she could control, the man who would always come back to her no matter how badly she treated him. But she was wrong. Michael had found his strength, and he was not going to let anyone take it away from him again. In the end, Michael's story became one of resilience and redemption. He had been knocked down, humiliated, and betrayed, but he had refused to stay down. With the help of those who cared about him, he had rebuilt his life, piece by piece, and had come out stronger on the other side. He knew that there would still be challenges ahead, but he also knew that he had the strength to face them and that he was no longer alone. As he stood in his modest apartment, looking out at the world that had once seemed so hostile, Michael allowed himself a small smile. 
He was no longer the man who had been broken by Angela's cruelty. He was a man who had found his way back to himself, and he was ready to face whatever came next. With money in his account and his self-esteem slowly returning, Michael knew that he was finally on the path to the life he had always dreamed of, a life where he was not defined by his past, but by the strength he had found to overcome it. Thank you for watching.